Chris, three days down at the Tour de France. What have your first impressions been? I think we shouldn't be surprised really. It looked like it should be a fairly set pattern for the Tour, for the kickoff, and we've had little surprises every single day. Um, and it keeps us interested, it's great. Weather's been great. I've got out my bike, so. Oh, sure. I mean, the first first stage, we, we surprised with, with the final 10k of how things panned out in the end, the time gaps? Um, yeah, I think everybody, I mean, well, we shouldn't be really, should we? I mean, because we know there's crashes in the first week of the Tour. Um, we knew there'd be crosswinds. Uh, we knew it'd be tightly packed, and it happened. I think everyone was a little bit surprised that, that uh, Alberto Contador got caught out. We reviewed the video, and it wasn't in the top 50. And it's not an easy thing to do to ride at the front in the Tour. You know, there's, there's nearly 200 guys, and there's only 20 or 30 places, but everyone else was there. So not a great start for him, and he hasn't got that buffer that uh, from the prologue either of last year, because he got a bit of time chunk there. So he's also lost that time chunk, which he had on uh, Andy Schreck as well. So it's, yeah, it hasn't been a great couple of days for him. Is he still the man to beat? I think he's still the man to beat, but I mean, it's fantastic for us as viewers because he has to go on the offensive now in the hills. Got to, not you know, no other way around it. Um, I think uh, Andy Slex in great shape. I think you saw that in the finish uh, on day one. It was a really gnarly finish. Dale Evans is also in great shape. So there's a great clump of people who are probably not quite as good uh, as Contador in the hills, but they've all now got a buffer. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Who for you is the danger man, though? I mean, looking at out of the top two of Schleck and, and Contador. I think. Uh, I think Andy Schleck's, it's going to be really close and I think he might get it actually. Uh, he's ridden really well in his first couple of days. The bits that are normally his bugbear, he's, he's, he's worked hard on those. His time trialling is always going to be the problem. You know, He's got one of those so he also needs to keep the majority of the buffer that he's already got. How much time does he need in fact for the last time trial in Grenoble? I'd be guesstimating, I really wouldn't, wouldn't like to say. But you've got to be talking a significant chunk, you know, well over a minute. And yesterday we saw the team time trial. Did that go to plan in terms of who you thought was were going to be up there into Garmin and Sky and BMC? I, th I thought Leopard Trek, and that's what I'm going to keep calling them. Uh, I thought they did they did a really good ride actually. I think they did. They managed the resources they had very very well. A little bit surprised perhaps by by Radio Radio Shack, but it might have been slightly better. But having said that, the big surprise was the fact that between second and fifth place, everybody was within one second of each other. That's incredibly close. Um, and, I, and I think the big winner really was Cadell Evans' team. They really, really rode well to, uh, to get right up there. What is the art of, of team time trialling? I mean, it's something that you've obviously done a lot on um, when you're in your heyday. Is it just about making as few mistakes as possible? I think it is understanding what, you, what resources you've got in a team time trial, understanding it and managing it. So, for example, there's a lot of teams out there, clearly, when they were absolutely full gas, some of those guys could, could just go through at best just to keep continuity, and that's what they should have done. Uh, and other guys have got to go literally up to a minute turn, like Bradley Wiggins, to, to give them a rest. So real disparity in terms to, to make sure that the workload is relative to each individual. Um, and I think the best teams did that well. And today, I mean, the biggest talking point was perhaps the intermediate sprint. We didn't actually find out until until after the stage. I mean, you obviously did all your interviews for, for ITV and then had to do them all over again? Or? Well, that's why we're all still on site now, because we've had to redo them. It took over three hours uh, to get that result out. I mean, we, we saw it and went, oh, that looks interesting. We wound the tape and went, no, it's nothing. So we managed to review it in a few seconds, and I can't believe the technology isn't available. God, we're in a, a media centre here that the commissars couldn't see that as well. But And the result itself, well, I think it's incomprehensible. They have a really, really hard job, the commissars. They've got to make decisions and they've got to stick to them. But uh, that one, I just don't get it. No, nobody's line was impeded. Nobody protested. They were happy. Nobody was endangered. Um, I think it flips the question. You have to say, well, what is it you want sprinting to look like? Because for the rest of us, that's what sprinting looks like. Just to play devil's advocate, I mean, last year we saw Orange being thrown out of the race for headbutting. Cav, again, he used his head today. I he mean, did, to defend himself. Um, it was actually Tor Hushoff who was coming across, and that was spotted by, by the commissar, who we got an interview with. Um, but, but I'm not sure what he, what, what he's supposed to do. <laughs> if somebody leans on you, you have to instantly move out of the way. Is that what happens? And, and, and I hope that the commissars are watching everything and disqualify everybody who makes infringements. It's just silly. Both of those guys were happy. Tor Hushoff was joking about it. In fact, he hadn't even remembered there was an incident until, until, uh, until we asked him about it. And he said, no. Mark should just get some suntan cream on his arm to reduce the friction, that's it. So I, I just don't know what people want sprinting to look like if that isn't it. And just quickly, going from Mark Cavendish to the British contingent that we've had. Um, Phenomenal. For, for, for many years it was just yourself, 
you know, the, the lone bastion for, for GB. Now the country's got, or the nation's got so many, so many riders, such a wealth. More and more strength in depth on all of them. You're doing right up there today in the top ten. How many riders? Three. Yeah, it's just an incredible team. So many riders. And there we go. Gary Thomas in the white jersey. Brad looking super strong. Um, we've never, well, I can't recall in living memory, should we say, at a time when we're in better shape than we are right now. What are the expectations? There's a lot of expectations. I think it's more hopes, to be honest, than expectations. Um, it's a tough seat to be in, everyone expecting you to get on the podium in the Tour de France, but he's got a great shot. Everybody's up for it, everybody believes in it after the day for now, so he's in good shape. Um, I just think, I'd like to see some stage wins from Garen Thomas as well. We've seen him a couple of times this year, and again today, do a lead out and just really show a turn of speed. And I wonder if, uh, if the team sets him up to be the person who lets loose with 600 to go, what could he do with it?